Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainbows.com and today I am making a real-time mug from polymer clay. If you'd like to make them, just stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. So today I'm going to be using polymer clay, isopropyl alcohol, or nail polish remover, and we're going to need an oven and some paint and a little Mod Podge for sealant. So I'm using Sculpey 2 or Sculpey 3 in white. You can get it at the craft store or you can get it on Amazon in bulk. And I'm just going to condition it a little bit to make it pliable enough to form it into a marshmallow. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> it looks like a marshmallow. The size of your mug is going to depend on whatever you want. I'm making mine a little bit oversized for a hot cocoa gnome. You got a preview of there. But all I'm going to do is open the top a little bit so I have a nice outer bit that I can put in some brown. You don't need a lot of brown clay here. You can even just paint on some brown if you would like to make a coffee. Um, but here I'm enveloping it and really combining it so we don't have to use any clay adhesive to get it going. So for those of you who are wondering, oh no, it's all messed up with the top, don't worry, we're going to cut that off to sort of make it defined. Now I did mess up here. I do recommend you roll while you cut so you don't squish it like this, but I knew I was adding a brim so, and I also knew I was adding cocoa or um, whipped cream to my cocoa. So if you are just using it as a coffee mug or a mug without whipped cream, you do need to go ahead and use the pad of your finger to make sure the brown is distributed pretty evenly along the top there. I rolled a small snake of white clay and I'm adding just a brim to the cup. I messed this up. I'll show you exactly what I do. Y'all know I don't hide my mistakes, but I didn't make it even on my snake, which made it not even on my cup. So I'm going to need to, you see that big spot there that had no brim? You see this part that has too big of a brim? So I'm using this box cutter slash craft knife. Um, and I'm just going to separate the pieces, kind of help move the clay around. So you can see here I'm rolling it, pressing it, and just kind of making sure I get as much as I possibly can uh, it even. All right, so while I'm rolling this snake, again, all real time, not editing anything out, I do want to tell you that sometimes when you're working with clay, the item can get too warm. And if that's the case, if your room is warm, if your hands are warm, you can always stop and put it into the refrigerator until it's firmed up a little bit. It won't bake, it won't be firm enough to, um, you know, to keep its shape, but it will help that it will allow it to be a little bit easier to work with because when it's too warm, it's not easy. All right, so for the whipped cream you saw there, I started in the middle of the cup to hide that end, and then I just made the whipped cream in sort of a topply over fashion. You can do it uh, straight up if you'd like, just two curls, whatever. And then I'm going to allow a little bit of the hot cocoa to show through, but if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You just press those layers in a little bit together. Speaking of pressing in, you're going to use a little bit of the snake that you made to make a handle. Grab something thin and small and roundish, and you're just going to use that to blend the handle into the mug. If you happen to have some liquid Sculpey, which is a liquid clay bonding agent, you can go ahead and add that right before you add your handle on. It's really a good addition. But most of my readers and viewers don't have that, so this is the method you'll need to use to make sure this handle does not come off. You can see how much time I'm spending here. You can see I'm using the paintbrush um, itself, the end of the paintbrush, and my fingers, just to make sure it's all blended. This little edge is just making me angry. <laughs> I don't care about the back because I'm going to be attaching it to my gnome, but I do care about the front, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more time right here and try and get this edge a little bit more even. And now I'm gonna try and like get out that huge divot that I just made with my finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so speaking of the divots and the imperfections, you're gonna have a ton of them, especially if you're working with white clay. You'll be able to see lint. You'll be able to see your fingerprints, tons of stuff. So what you want to do is get one of two things. You can either get a nail polish remover or you can get an isopropyl alcohol. And what we're gonna do is protect your work surface 
which I didn't do. You're going to see in a minute. Um, but after you get it sort of blended the way you want, we're going to start cleaning up those imperfections. You can see, see those big bumpies? Just try and move those out with your finger. Making sure my whipped cream is going to stay before baking. And then here you can see, just got it everywhere. So I'm gonna actually run and get the little baking tray that I'm gonna use for this, um, which has like a parchment or a butcher paper on it, um, just to protect your tray. If you don't have a craft oven, you can do this in your regular oven. You'll just have to air it out quite well. Um, okay, so I'm using the paintbrush and the isopropyl alcohol or nail polish remover to take away all of these little things that have been adopted into my clay. So it's white, you'll see everything. You will see lint, you will see random strings, you will see animal hair from things that have never entered your house. Glitter, glitter will end up here. Everything in your craft room is gonna end up on your white clay mug, just guaranteed. So what the alcohol helps us do is remove all of those and it will also remove um, like uh, fingerprints and sort of help even everything out. You can see I'm using the paintbrush and that's sort of helping to smooth everything out. You're not wanting to make it wet or, you know, like you're not wanting to cover the thing, but you're just wanting to have something that will dry off, allowing you to sort of help move everything around. And like I said, if you spend a little bit of time here, it will make a difference. I'm going to end up painting mine. So if you don't, that's, you know, spend a little more time. So you're gonna bake it per the instructions and always let the items cool in the oven. Do not have a massive temperature change because that's when cracking most occurs. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we cool it all the way before we paint. So I am using what I consider the best copper paint I've ever used and that is the Martha Stewart metallic in copper. I love this paint. I think you will too. Just saying, if you like copper, this is the one. I think you can get it at Joann's is where I got this one. I'm not sure. But once I, you can see like I'm just taking a little time right on the edge. Now I am going to paint my whipped cream. So you don't have to be as careful as this if you're just gonna paint your whipped cream. But the white of Sculpey's clay is not like a very bright white. It's going to make a huge difference if you use a little acrylic paint to paint it. So you can see I'm only using one coat of the copper paint here, um, but if it was like right there where it was like kind of light, I just went over it a little bit more and then I left this to dry before I added my white paint for the whipped cream. All right, so here I'm gonna add the little white paint and I will say, um, do a little bit of extra on the brim. So just to kind of help define it, like, you know, use the pointed part of your paintbrush and spend a little time down there. If you are using baked clay sprinkles, either that you've made from polymer clay or that you've bought, um, you can also add them here or in the next phase. You can see my Mod Podge hanging out over there to the left. <laughs> So once the paint is dry, you can use Mod Podge to seal everything in. I do actually recommend a clay sealant, but if you are not working with polymer clay a lot, you're not gonna have it on hand. So everybody pretty much has Mod Podge, right? So you can seal this, and here's a perfect time to add your baked clay sprinkles and that you buy or you make, um, or a chocolate drizzle out of chocolate paint, all that before you seal it, and then add any sprinkles and then seal it again. And that'll help everything stay in place but I just gave it one nice coat of Mod Podge making sure that you couldn't really see the paintbrush marks if you are using a dark colored paint um, go a little slowly and work with a flat brush to reduce the paint strokes you would see in the Mod Podge oops I just knocked it over but this is it and you're done with this entire mug and so you can make up a lot of them and uh you know have them on hand or make them per batch as always thank you so much for joining me please like and subscribe for more crafty fun